Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope you're well, hope you're enjoying your Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I'm so bad, I'm, I'm already set off 10 seconds into this video like an absolute train wreck. Yeah, enjoy your Tuesday, guys. Whatever you're doing, please enjoy it. It's absolutely scorching outside, so look after yourselves. It's not a, it's not a day to be playing silly buggers with yourself. Um, let's talk in this video around the updated deals on the Tangi and Dombele, the Davos and Sanchez, the breakdown and fees and options to buy and all that sort of stuff. Got an interesting update around Conor Gallagher as well, which I do quite want to talk about. Um, as well as a nice little update around Alfie Devine, uh, which I think will make most people quite happy. So let me start with the two deals to Galatasaray that got announced yesterday. So you've got Davos and Sanchez who moved on a permanent, as well as Tangi and Dombele who's moved with a loan with an option to buy. Um, I'm going to start with Danza Sanchez, be it that he is the permanent transfer. So Danza Sanchez, when and they, they, there's different amounts being banded around anywhere from between nine and a half million euros to sort of about 15. But I'm going to work with 10 million euros as my sort of general gist around that. Um, the deal supposedly instalments wise are being paid over five years. So let's call it two million euros a year, which look. I think we probably could have done better. But if Big Andrew said, look, he's not in my plans. He doesn't suit what I want to do. We should probably look to move him on. I quite like the look of Ashley Phillips. Then do you know what? It is what it is. You could consider Ashley Phillips the number three uh, centre half as well. The guy who we were brought in this summer to be that. You know, I think he's from all counts of Spurs journalists. He has impressed Big Ange. And I think... He's only going to get better as age goes by. The one thing I would say is, look, we're probably going to be seeing a little bit of him in the lead up to Christmas. I just hope that Spurs fans are patient enough to say, look, he's going to make mistakes. He's 18. We've got to then live with those potential mistakes and support him all the way through it. Um, I'm excited by him. Physical, natural gifts that he has. He definitely has them in an abundance. Um, big physical presence as well as that. And you know what? He grew up through the lower leagues. That hardens you up a little bit. I've always talked about it, you know, having sent, uh, sending younger players out on loan to the championship, to the League One or the League Two of this world. Because you know why? It just hardens you up. You play a lot more games because, you know, most of the time there's 46 games in a season in those lower leagues. And you're going to get lumps kicked out of you. And that's, I think, something that... I, I'm not saying Brian Hill should go to a lower league club, but... I want to see Brian Hill in a more physical league because I think it's going to work on his favour because he's going to get, at times, kicked a little bit. And I think that's only going to improve him, you know, when he's being compared to a Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva gets kicked and just waltzes through those kicks. You don't really think the same of Brian Hill. And I think maybe that sort of loan deal could really benefit Brian Hill more than anyone, not just Spurs or the club that he goes playing for. So that's on Davos and Sanchez. On the Tangi and Dombele front, so yes, it's a loan deal for the year with an option to buy 15 million euros, um, which again can be paid over a five-year sum starting from next summer. Um, that's what, I mean, we've got to be sitting here, I've got to be sitting here saying, look, if he tears it up, we've got 15 million for him in the end, or 15 million euros, 12, about 12 million for him in the end. We've got to take it. That's probably as good as we were going to get, if I'm honest. Um I think one thing I definitely will do, I believe probably later into, maybe in like the late part of September, maybe early October, once things have settled, markets are all done, players are all moved and playing, something that I definitely want to do is like a loan watch video and just tell you how players are getting on on loan, you know, talking about how they're doing and things like that. So definitely something I will talk about and Tanya and Dobbele will be a part of that video. He... He's on a lot of money. We are paying, I believe, so we're paying definitely over 50% of his wages. I think it's like something like 60 to 70% or something like that. 15 million euros. It's worth the punt, if I'm honest. It really is. Um, I mean, when we put him on loan that first time with an option to buy of like 50 million, that was never going to happen. At least we've got a more realistic option to buy. And do you know what? Galatasaray have the money to spend on that. They do. Um, I mean, they offered supposedly Sergio Ramos about 11 million euros a year for a contract. There's no reason why Tangi and Dobele can't be bought 50 million euros, you know. So definitely holding out hope that he's going to do well. Um, a quick update around Hugo Lloris, just to let you know. This is from the standards, uh, and it said that there, Hugo Lloris is reluctant to accept any offer to leave Spurs, by, despite being told he will not be a part of Postacoglu's 
man Premier League squad. Uh, decision makers at the club surprised and unsure of Lloris's intentions. I I'm a bit surprised as well, to be honest. I thought, you know, he was kind of saying, you know, I want to move on and try something new. Um, I would have thought he just got bought out of his contract. Regardless of Lloris's situation, I just thought he would have been bought out of his contract, if I'm honest. Um, and I still think he will. I just don't know where that move's coming. I, I, I genuinely thought it'd be Saudi Arabia. And that's, you know, there's no knock on Lloris. I mean, you've got players who are way too good to be playing in Saudi Arabia at the moment. You've got Fabinho that's gone out, I guess. Sadio Mane has gone out there, just to name a couple. There's a lot more that have gone out there that you kind of sit there and go, God, you're too good for this league. A French World Cup winning captain, you know, quite well known in the world of football. It, you know, a good character, you know. He's not going to cause trouble outside of football, if you know what I mean. Like, he's perfect for Saudi Arabia. I thought they would have gone all over him, but well, I don't know. I don't know. They don't really sign many keepers, Saudi Arabia. I know they've got Mendy. I don't think they signed anyone else. So maybe that might be something that might come up. I don't know. But I do think he'll get his bottle up his contract, if I'm honest. I, I just, I, I don't, you, we're not going to get money out of him. I think there was reports earlier in the summer that we thought we were going to get a fee out of him, which I think was brave to say. I just, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. But hey, ho. Let's talk Conor Gallagher. So we were linked with Conor Gallagher really heavily over the last 48 hours of the window. And Fabrizio Romano tweeted out uh, that he understands that Tottenham did not send any formal bid for Conor Gallagher on deadline day. Interest was there, but no £40 million proposal despite reports. Talks were not advancing as Spurs were never really close to selling Hoiberg to Atletico. Um, I talked about this. There was no formal bid. It was a verbal bid and it was around that £40 million mark that we put in there to kind of gauge the water as say, look, would Chelsea budge? Would they want to play ball? Um, and I think they would have played ball, if I'm honest. I think they would have, if, if the bid was formalised as about £45 million, I think they would have accepted it personally. Um, it is interesting to think that Atletico Madrid were never that close to signing Hoiberg and I always thought they were getting there or thereabouts. I don't know. I, I, I've, I've spoken on this video. I've spoken with you guys in the comments and even said that I think Hoiberg has value when you're trying to hold on to a lead or, you know, you're down to 10 men or you're trying to hold on to that last minute draw and you stick him on. I think he has his benefits there. But, you know, when you're chasing the game, I don't see his benefit. You know, we saw him against Fulham and it was a bit of a passenger at times in this in this system. Whereas he's come on in other games where we're 2-0 no up and he's intercepted a few balls and he looked like a bit of a... A disruptor for their for the opposition team, not ours, obviously, because by that point we're in control of the game. He's got two years left on his deal. It wouldn't shock me if he's moved in January. Because Benton excuse me, Benton Corby be back. You know, we might look to reinforce that midfield again through January. Benton Corby have had a couple of months of playtime by then. You know, I mean I've always seen reports that Benton Corby's begging Poster Corby to come back to training and the medical team are putting a hook in his mouth and yanking him out of the room. Um I don't see a future for Hoiberg at Spurs, really. I, I see him having a future for the next six months. You know, we're not going to be playing every three or four days like we have been in the past sort of nine years. We're going to have an opportunity to really have a coach who can coach the team. And it's kind of a weird storm that Ange has come into where he actually can coach the team and spend time really working on his style of play. And in such a short space of time, it's worked. But I think Hoiberg just doesn't really suit that style of play. And I think he will be moved in either January or the next summer. He won't be here next season. I know that. That's my prediction. I'm not saying that I know. or I've spoken to Hoiberg. I'm, Pierre, what are you up to next year? And he said, oh, I'm going in. I'm like, oh, cheers, mate. I'll keep that in the locker for later on. It's not that. What I'm saying is, Ange is moving on players like Tangin Dombele, like Davison Sanchez, Tried to move on from players like Pierre Hoiberg, Eric Dyer. These are all Pochettino guys, by the way. I know, right? Scary. They're all these guys that have been through four, five, six managers in the space of the last half decade. And Ange just wants them moved away. He wants fresh blood in. And I don't blame him. We need that. We need to be moving on players like that. And I, and I think... It wouldn't surprise me if Dyer just gets loaned out in January and just goes, look, just go away. Just just go away, all right? The fact that he's getting closer to the first team scares me a little bit. But, I mean, there's talks of Dorrington coming through the youth setup, And you know what? It's, it's not a bad idea for him to train with the first team here and there and still play like the under-23s and things like that. But I do think he'd be like the fifth centre-half. I think Ben Davies will be the second centre-half behind Van der Ven. And obviously Ashley Phillips being Romero's backup. But on Gallagher... It doesn't shock me, but it doesn't. 
I think Chelsea wouldn't mind opening talks with them for a new contract, but it wouldn't surprise me if it hasn't happened or progressed that Spurs don't go knocking again in January. I think he, they next summer will have another overhaul of that midfield where you have a Madison, Basuma, Papamatsa, the Benton cause of this world. But you might see a La Celso move. You might see a little skip moved if, if he hasn't progressed because I don't think Skip's progressed enough over the last year and a half and turmoil has not helped that. But I think this season will be a big season for Skip. He needs to progress. If he doesn't, I think Spurs will look to move him on, to be honest, like they did with Ryan Mason, like they did with Harry Winks. There's a common trend here. But anyway, guys, that's it the video. I hope you did enjoy it. Um, drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below. Are you happy about the the, the instalments of the Sanchez and Tangi Dobele deals? Are you happy about you know us not really progressing on Gallagher? Are you upset we have not pressed on Gallagher because we couldn't move Hoiberg? You let me know. And are you happy about Phillips being basically the backup centre back now at eighteen years old? You let me know. I'm happy about it because I trust Big Ange. That's that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, guys, and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.